do you want to become a trainer of ISO 20 2018 or if you want to transit your organization from ISO 20 2005 to ISO 20 2018 then you just need to watch this video this video will define you almost all the changes in this new version just for a recall that previous version was ISO 20 2005 and now the new version is ISO 20 2018. This new standard has been published on June 19, 2018 and the deadline for all industries who are already ISO 20 2000 certified against 2005 version. They must transit before 19 June 2021 after which ISO 20 2000 2005 will be withdrawn. In new version of ISO 20 2000 that is 2018 version, there are two types of changes in the standard. Number one, the changes which has no impact on in industries and number two, the changes which has an impact on industries. We will see both the changes in detail and in the end of each change, I will tell you the impact of this change on industries who wants to transit from 2005 version to 2018. So let's start with the change number one. Previously, there were eight major clauses of the standard that are scope, normative reference, terms and definitions, food safety management system, management responsibility, resource management, planning and realization of safe product, validation, verification and improvement of food safety management system. Now there are 10 clauses due to the adoption of Annex SL. What is Annex SL? We'll tell you in some other video. But for now, you just need to remember the new 10 major clauses that are scope, normative reference, terms and definition, context of organization, leadership, planning, support, operation, performance evaluation, and the last and 10th clause is improvement. Impact of change number one on the industry. If an industry have a documented food safety manual on 2005 version, then organization has to update the manual. Otherwise, this change of clause has no impact on industry. Change number two. There is no requirement of any mandatory SOP in new version now. In previous version, seven mandatory procedures were required. Making SOPs are all risk-based now. If you think making SOP will give you benefits to your organization, make it, otherwise there is no need to make a procedure. Impact of change number two on the industry. So it has actually no impact on industry. If you already have procedures as per previous version, keep them as it is. Change number three. In new version, a term documented information is used both for document and record. You will not find the term record or document in the standard. However, we have to make a document and record both. Easy way to understand where to make a document and where to make a record is that the clauses where the term retain is used along with documented information, it means you have to make a record. And where in the clause the term available or maintain are used along with documented information, it means this clause required from organization to make a document. This is the list for complete document information with, segrega with segregation where to make a document and where to make a record. Watch this complete video if you want to understand the difference between a document and record. Impact of this change number three on the industry. So again, a company who is already certified against 2005 version has to do no such updates in this change as all documents records are more or less same. Change number four. In previous version, single PDC cycle was illustrated in the standard covering complete standard and linking it to organizational structure. Now standard divided PDC cycle into two levels. One is from clause four to seven and nine to 10 and other PDC is for clause eight. Impact of change number four on the industry. If you don't want to remember this change, don't remember. Only remember this thing 
that PDCA is an approach, is a technique, is a method to comply the standard requirement. And this method says that all processes, tasks, activities should be based on PDCA. This change has also no such impact on any already compliant industry on ISO 20 2000, 2005. <clears throat> Change number five, the HACCP and OPRP plan are put together in a hazard control plan with action criteria to be defined for the identified OPRPs and critical limits for CCPs. Action criteria is an additional thing in the standard, which means if there is an OPRP in any industry, they must define a measurable or observable specification for the monitoring of OPRP. There was no requirement in previous version for any observable or measurable specification for monitoring. Please note the difference between critical limits and action criterion. Critical limits are related with the product or process acceptance criteria, whereas action criteria is the acceptable specification of the monitoring activity of an OPRP. Impact of this change on the industry. This change has little impact. You need to define in your OPRP plan about the action criterion of the monitoring activity. Change number six. Processing aids, packaging and utilities are also to be added to the required documented flow diagram. Previously, it says that just raw materials, ingredients and product flow where enter the flow should be included. Now you need to show in your process flow diagram about the entry of processing aids, packaging and utilities. Impact of change number six on the industry. This has the little impact on a document. You need to update your process flow diagram. Change number seven. A specific and separate clause for suppliers management has been introduced in clause 7.1.6 that is control of externally provided processes, products or services. This clause introduces the need to control the suppliers of products, processes and services including outsource activities. Previously, this requirement was included in PRP section in just a one line statement that is verification of purchase material. Now standard give this requirement some importance and require from organization to control suppliers, subcontractors, service providers, etc. Impact of change number seven on the industry. This clause also has some impact on organization as the companies who are already certified against ISO 20 2005 version. They just have the suppliers control for raw materials. Now you need to control or manage all subcontractors, service providers as well. Change number eight. Changes in definition. Significant modification have been made to the terminologies and some important terms have been rephrased such as harm, is replaced by adverse health effect to emphasize the degree of food safety hazard. Likewise, assurance has been used to highlight the relationship between the consumer and health safety of food products. Impact of this change on the industry. That has no impact on organization as such. Change number nine, risk management or risk-based approach is added in this new standard. Previously, it was just required for the production process flow in HACCP risk assessment. Now, it is required for the complete organization as well. Complete organization means all departments, whether it is QC, procurement, sales and marketing, HR, they all have to determine their internal or external issues, determine needs and expectation of their interested parties, identify risks, and identify the action plan of those risks to mitigate them. Impact of change number nine on the industry. This change has the impact on organization and industry as industry has to do some work on organizational risks with respect to food safety. There is a complete video in my channel on risk management. Do watch that video to get an idea about risk management, management as per ISO 22000. Change number 10. 
within the characteristics of raw materials ingredients and packaging the source of each product needs now also to be defined and documented in previous version it was not required impact of change number 10 on the industry it has little impact as organization has to update the raw material characteristics document change number 11 when selecting or establishing prps the applicable technical specification in the iso ts 22002 series should be considered here should be is used it means it is recommended not mandatory impact of this change on the industry if you have solid justification for your already established practices with appropriate result it is all okay so again no impact on industry already certified against 2005 version change number 12 emergency preparedness and response clause is now being defined in detail that what is required from the organization previously it was just three lines in generic words now new version require specific things to be complied example documented information shall be maintained for the emergency preparedness and response consideration of applicable legal requirements periodic tests test needs to be carried out etc impact of change number 12 on the industry this will create an impact on industry as industry has to develop the document for emergency preparedness and response previously it was not required moreover organization has to carry out mock or periodic test to check the effectiveness of emergency preparedness and response change number 13 another new clause with the title control of changes has been added in a standard that is clause 6.3 that has no such impact on industry because this clause says that when organization was to change anything in the company either its its person management processes products the change should be carried out in a planned manner impact of this change on the industry this clause has on has on impact on organization that are already certified against 2005 version just for a lighter note our reply to this clause as thank you so much clause 6.3 we already been doing the same since long example we always do the homework for the purpose and consequences of any change we ensure the integrity of food safety management system do not be compromised we ensure the effective implementation of this change so this clause ultimately has no such impact on organization that are already certified against 2005 version change number 14 requirements of objectives are clearly defined in this new standard in previous version there was no specific clause for objectives it was covered in clause 5.2 and 5.3 make measurable objectives and planning of them was just the requirement of previous version now standard required that objectives to be monitored and verified to be communicated who is the responsible Uh, for those objectives target date for the completion of those objectives what is the evaluation criteria etc impact of change number 14 on the industry although the previous version was not explanatory for the requirement of objectives however the organization were already doing all the things to comply the requirement so i again say that this requirement has no such impact on industry who are already certified against 2005 version hope this video will help you to understand the changes and help you to update the things in your organization as per iso 22000 2018 give me your feedback and thank you so much for watching this video